Hey crafty people, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd because I'm a nerd who loves to craft. Over the years I've dabbled in most types of crafting, although for the past decade or so I've been doing primarily card making and mixed media art. I've recently embarked on a junk journaling journey that I hope you'll join me on. Today we're going to work on creating a booklet filled with tearaway tickets. Let's get crafting! Today's project was inspired by Louisa Heinzel's Day 5 for Defemember of 2022. I'll link that video below. And her project was inspired by a project by the Junk Journal Addict. I'll link that video below as well. And what Louisa created was a booklet with tearaway tickets. And the way she created her tearaway tickets is she took a ticket, attached a piece of paper to the back of the ticket, and then attached flap of the paper down to the booklet and then put a decorative piece of paper to cover up the piece of the tab attached to her booklet to create her tearaway tickets. And I thought, I bet I could create a ticket that has a tearaway tab attached already. So that's what we're going to do. This was, you know, my practice prototype for this project. So I am using watercolor paper to create my tickets because I uh, colored a bunch of papers with distress inks for creating the tickets. And I cut the paper into inch wide strips and my tickets are gonna be two inches long and my tearaway tab's gonna be half an inch. So I'm going to show you a low tech, mid tech and high tech way of doing your tickets. Um, and really the only difference is between each of the ways is what tools you will need. For the low tech, you're gonna need scissors, a ruler, and some kind of scoring tool. You can use a bone folder. Um, I've got this Sizzix tool that can be used for scoring. You could use like the edge of a pen, whatever you wanna use to do your scoring with. So our first score is gonna be a half inch in. And so we're gonna go ahead and just mark this with a pencil for the TV viewing audience. So half inch in, and then I want my ticket to be two inches long. So I'll mark at the two inch mark. Then I'm gonna take my ruler, place it at our half inch mark. Might as well use the lines on my mat here and score with my scoring tool. And then I'm gonna move down to my two inch mark and score again with my scoring tool. So as you can see, there's scored lines for those two spots. And we're gonna fold and crease along those scored lines using, if you have a bone folder, bone folder. If not, you can use like the handle of your scissors, whatever you've got to help you get a nice crisp fold. So, to create our ticket shape in our low tech version, we're going to take and fold over our edge, take our scissors, and kind of cut out a little rounded notch so that it looks like that. I'm going to do it on this side, and this guy, and then over here as well. And now we've got our ticket shape, we've got our tab. To help with the tearing, because I'm using a really thick paper because it's watercolor paper, I'm gonna put a little water on my finger and run it along the back at both of my creases and just fold them over a couple times to make sure they're really well folded and we've broken down the fibers in the paper really well. And now I can tear my ticket. So now you've got the look of a torn away ticket. It's got the little tab attached so that it can go in your booklet and then you just have to put a decorative strip to hide the tear away tab and you can tear out the ticket from the booklet. So that's our low tech version. Our mid tech version is just gonna add in a scoreboard and a circle punch. So again, let's pull this down so you can actually see the marks on the top. We're gonna score a half inch for our 
tear away tab. And then at two and a half inches for our ticket. So again, we've got score lines. We're gonna fold along our score lines a couple times. Take out our scoring tool. Now, instead of using our scissors to cut out our notches, I'm gonna use a quarter inch hole punch. You can use whatever hole punch you have. And I'm just gonna slip it in along the score line. Can you see the score line? And put it in about halfway and punch out our notch. And do that on all four sides again. And again, because we're using the thick paper, I'm gonna use a little bit of water to help break down the fibers so that we can get it to tear nicely. And there we go. We've got another tear away ticket. So again, I'm gonna go into the little booklet like that and you'll be able to rip it off. For our last one, we are gonna use the high tech option. So for our high tech option, we're gonna pull in a specialty tool, tool that you may not have. I've got a very old Fisker rotary trimmer. Oops, sorry for bumping the camera. So this is my rotary trimmer. And it's got specialty blades. And one of the specialty blades is perforating blade. So it's got little dashes in the blades. And so this is the one, the reason why I bought this trimmer was back when I bought it 15 years ago, you could change out the blades for the specialty blades. Then a few years after I got my trimmer, they discontinued all the specialty blades. Um, and now I'm pretty sure this trimmer has been discontinued. But Tim Holtz makes a mini perforating rotary tool, and you can also get perforating rotary tools in the sewing section of your craft store. So what's nice about this is it will cut perforations so that we can create our tear away ticket quite easily. So let's do our half inch and then our two inches for our ticket. That aside. And as you can see, hopefully it's perforated. So when you bend it, you can kind of see it better that those are where it's still attached. And so it tears away real easy. Now again, we're gonna take our circle punch and punch our little notches. And I just go about halfway down. And so there we go, another tear away ticket that will go into our booklet. Now, if you are gonna do like I did and distress ink color your ticket bases, I would do that before doing the scoring and the cutting part like I did for these guys. And I am going to here in a minute go through and score and cut all of my strips. Now, I will list below all these various colors if you're wondering what distress colors I used for this. If I can find the piece of paper where I wrote it down, because I, I did, I kept notes of what I was using and, and made a list and I can't currently find where I put that list. I know this has got Uncharted Mariner. I know this is, and I think it's just, and some vintage photo and tea dye on this side. This one is probably vintage photo with some tea dye and some salvaged patina. This one I think is, oh, this one's got, it's from one of the Lindsay Stampin' Gang colors and I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head. It might be Buccaneer Bay Blue or something like that. 
Um, and then I think that's just tea dye maybe in there with that. Vintage photo and I think maybe shabby shatters. This I believe is cracked pistachio. This is abandoned coral. This is picked raspberry, I believe. This I believe will be is Savage Patina and Tea Dye, Villainous Potion and Wilted Violet. And I think some more Salvage Patina, Tea Dye and Vintage Photo. It's my best guess as to what these colors are. Um, I will definitely list them below if I find my list, but I'm gonna take a pause now, get them into our little ticket form. And then comes the fun part, decorating them. Okay, so I went ahead and used my uh, perforating blade on my trimmer to cut all of my tickets and punched all the corners. And I will warn you, if you're using a perforating tool, be very careful, or you might have your tear away bit tear away prematurely. <laughs> so I'll just end up using that as a ticket. And what I got from each strip was um, four tickets with the tear away attached, or in some cases, mostly attached, and then a spare ticket that I can just decorate and use um, to embellish maybe the booklets that I put the tickets in. So now comes the fun part where we decorate all of our tickets and make them all pretty and fancy. And I am going to start with, and probably only show on the video, decorating this group here, because I think these will go very nicely. Um, once I make the ticket booklet, I'm going to put it in one of the pages in my junk journal. So what I'm going to do is spread everybody out a little bit. And somehow I miscut, so I've got a short little stumpy ticket. <laughs> don't know how I managed that. But I've pulled out a bunch of my stamps because I want to incorporate some stamping. And then a bunch of other bits and bobs to decorate everybody with. So I'm going to start with, because I think it's a great way to add some subtle texture, some script stamps, and it's um, reflections. And I really love this script stamp. And I may use all three of them just to make things a little interesting. And the idea isn't, you know, I'm gonna keep it very subtle just to kind of add some background interest. Um, and I'm, because I'm keeping it subtle, I'm gonna grab some tea dye. And I'm just not pulling out a block because I don't necessarily need this to stamp evenly. So like, let's do it this way. I'm just gonna go. And I'm not even re-inking. I don't know if you can even see on the screen, but it's very, very subtle and faint. And it's just to add like a little bit of interest and texture to the pieces. I think I am gonna use the other ones too. So, can't even tell which way's right way up on this one. <laughs> And just going in, stamping. Tea dye is great for this because it's really light. Um, so you really just get a little hint of the stamp on there. Just kind of add a little interest. <clears throat> and I'm going to grab the last one. Oh, you know what? I didn't do any of those guys over there. So yeah, look, you can just barely see it on there. Um, so again, just adding a little bit of interest to the pieces without, you know, covering up a ton of the lovely colors I got from distress inking these strips. <clears throat> So I pulled out Eccentric, Correspondence, my stamp collector, Field Notes, and then a bunch of my stamps, some of which are Tim Holtz and some aren't. Um, 
my various collection of butterflies. I have a lot of butterflies. Um, and then my darkroom door global postmarks set. So I'm going to just grabbing the four and a half and that'll just fit up. Yeah, that'll work great. Uncharted Mariner. I think this is going to be a little darker than I want. So I'm going to grab a scrap piece of paper and stamp it off. So pretty much if you've got too much ink on your stamp and you don't want to go quite that intense, you stamp it off and then stamp it and it comes out lighter. Oops. And apparently this stamp wanted to be stamped because it jumped off. Maybe some salvaged patina, I think. But that is way too light. Mm, you know what? I am gonna grab cut feathers. Because that's gonna come in kind of between the Uncharted Mariner and the Savage Patina, similar in color. And I bet we'll work better and we'll show up. There we go, I like that better. Do that here. I definitely wanna make sure I get some butterflies on here. So this stamp is a Prima Marketing Cinnabar, don't forget to fly, butterfly. And I'm going to do a brown butterfly on our little blue background. I like that. And then maybe stick that guy over here as well. Uh, this is a Tim Holtz set. I think it's Entomology is the name of it. And let's pull out Mr. Bumblebee. Because he's a good size for these tickets. Now, of course, you could stamp it with bigger stamps that go off the ticket. That's absolutely up to you, whatever you like to do. I just want to keep it to stuff that's going to fit. I probably will stamp some things off, but I think for my bugs, I want to keep them on the ticket. And I'm going to go back to Peacock Feathers. Stamp Mr. Bumblebee right there. And now I'm going to grab, it is a Stampendous Butterflies. Um, I don't know the name of the set. I unpackage most of my stamps. The only reason the Tim Holtz guys are still in their packaging is because A, I have run out of room for CD cases and B, I got them after I decided I was going to start doing YouTube videos and so since everyone tends to show me the packaging in their videos I figured I'd keep them in their packaging and I'm still figuring out how I'm planning on storing them. Um, so my older stamp sets are all unpackaged in CD cases. I, I kept track of the manufacturer but I didn't always keep track of um, the name of the stamp set. Let's pull out some of our global postmarks. And let's do some postmarks off the page. So this is kind of, use whatever you got. Um, you don't have to use the same stamps I'm using. Uh, you don't even have to stamp if you don't want to. Like, this is completely optional. This is a Do whatever makes you happy for making your tickets all pretty. And so far, other than that, the these guys have all been from Eccentric is what I've been grabbing from. And as you can tell, I'm not fussing too much with how I'm stamping them. I'm just kind of like, stamp, move on, stamp, move 
move on. Because again, this is just to kind of add some interest to all these guys. And I just realized something. I also have to do the backs of everybody. We'll just finish taking care of the fronts and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do about the backs. Um... I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the backs of everybody and come back and then we will do some additional decorating. So I went ahead and stamped everybody on the back. The only thing I paid attention to was making sure I kept everybody right side up. I didn't pay attention to what was stamped on the front. I have no idea. They may have the same thing on them. I don't know, just randomly stamped. So I went ahead and finished up the tickets off uh, camera. And so I'm gonna show you what I did for each one. Um, I went around and inked all of the edges using Vintage Photo, I think. And for this one, you can see I used a little bit of uh, washi tape. And I die cut a bunch of flowers from book paper. And then inked them according to whichever one they were going on. So this one was inked with a uh, tea dye. And then the leaf, I think, was inked with salvaged patina and some tea dye. And in the center, I put some prills which are these little things they come in a jar I'm gonna have them forever <laughs> I have like two sets of them in a variety of colors and I have not put a dent in many of them I think two of them I've used on a mixed media project that I put a dent in um, I left the back sides pretty much plain because I didn't want to add too much bulk once we put them into the little booklet uh, this one, I just added a washi sticker, and I really liked how that looked. And this one's got some washi tape. And the butterfly is a die cut by Cheery Lynn Designs. And it's cut out of, I don't remember, I think this was from a catalog. So I cut out a bunch of butterflies from pages from magazines and catalogs, mostly catalogs, and some brochures from when I was planning a trip I took to Maine. Uh, last year. So this one again I put a little bit of washi tape and another one of the flowers. This one just got a washi sticker and some washi tape and these were ones I bought on Amazon. Um, so for these flowers since it was going to be further down in the stack and I didn't want to add as much dimension instead of the prills I used um, liquid pearls on them and some more washi tape. This one for some, I, I miscut when I was doing this, this one's strip. So of course it's a little short, um, but another butterfly and some washi tape. This one again, uh, a washi sticker and a butterfly. And then this butterfly is from 49 and Market, Tidal Wave Laser Cut Elements. Um, so yeah, I went on a bit of a shopping spray at the end of 2022, and so I'm trying to make sure I actually use all the stuff I felt compelled to buy. Again, some um, washi tape and one of the flowers, another of the die cut butterflies. And what's really great when you use like magazine or catalog pages is they're all end up being one of a kind because it's whatever page you pulled out of the paper, whatever section of the picture you use and you never know what you're going to get until you cut. Um, so again, washi and the butterflies. And that was an idea I got from Margaret over at uh, Seven Plazas is her YouTube channel. All right. So then I decided what I'm going to put them in is I bought the Tim Holtz chapter three dies. This is the file folder one. So I die cut it and then I inked it and then I put the tickets in and went, Ugh, they blended too much. So I'm not going to actually use this one. What I did pull out was a coffee dyed, which is very lightly coffee dyed book page and die cut it from that. And it wasn't very straight when I put it in the die cut. So um, because yeah, it looks all crooked, but it's not. So I'm going to use that. And I think I may just ink the edges to let them stand out a little bit. Peacock feathers. So we're gonna go ahead and ink the edges just to give that a little bit of personality.
So I ended up pulling out, I used this washi sticker on, on some of the tags. So I had a leftover bit of that. This is another washi sticker. I thought that would look nice, hopefully. One of my coffee dyed um, cupcake wrap wrappers. Gonna fold this sucker in half and glue it on. Now I'm not gonna decorate the back of this. Um, and I haven't decided yet what I wanna do on the inside, if anything. So we're gonna start by decorating the front. And the reason I'm not gonna decorate the back is because I plan on, once this is done, sticking this in my junk journal. So we're just gonna go ahead and hopefully still be on screen. Glue the cupcake wrapper down. Um, and this was uh, the leftover tag from each, and these gears are a Sizzix Tim Holtz die, and I forget the name of it off the top of my head. But we're going to put that. So those were also cut out of uh, mostly catalogs. I don't have a lot of magazines, and I decorated the back because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them. And this one's going to get stuck on the front to go, and I'm using um, art glitter glue because... It works great and I really like it. Now, this shows up, I noticed when I was putting it on, way too white. So I'm just gonna trim off all that white because I just did not like how it looked. And these are not the scissors I wanna use. I'm gonna try and get the backing off this sticker. There we go. I have a feeling it's gonna be too white. So I don't know how well you can see the cupcake wrapper. I probably should have gone with one of the darker ones. I think I like that. All right, we're gonna add that too. And next we'll add our tickets. All right, I'm gonna take my butterflies and I'm gonna give them a little dimension. So I've got sculpting tools. Um, this is the Sizzix ones that I will use often. And these were a set I bought. They, I think they are actually marketed on Amazon for doing like mandalas. Um, and all you do is gently rub the part you wanna give a little dimension to. And it'll curve your butterfly. You can see, Oop. it helps if I actually hold the butterfly in my hand when I hold it up to the camera. So it curls it all up and then you just flip it over if it will cooperate and flip over. And down the center of your butterfly, crease down the center and now your butterfly's wings are kind of sticking up. So I will just put glue along the center of the butterfly so that the wings aren't glued down but as you'll see I'll show you on the tags because I did this the exact same way for all of the tags so I'm just gluing it down the wings are loose they're not glued down but they will flatten out um, if they're smushed down like this guy, so none of the wings are attached so that they have a little bit little bit of dimension, but not so much that it causes it to be like bulky or because they're kind of delicate them to get damaged. I think I like that for my little cover. And now we're gonna attach our tickets on the inside. Each stack has three tickets in it and this will fit four stacks of tickets. If you don't have the Tim Holtz die, you don't need to make it a file folder shape. You can just do a piece and fold it in half. And again, it's gonna depend a little bit on what size you had decided on for your tickets. But this guy is basically not quite six inches, five and three quarters inches wide, folded in half. I gave you the dimension across, but I didn't tell you how high it is. Um, it's going to be a little bit over four inches, four and a half inches. Make sure I've got everybody lined up so they'll fit, so that the crease will close, 
and I'm gonna start with my bottom ticket. And I'm just gonna put glue on my tear away strip. And I'm gonna have to pause here in a second because the dogs have decided that they need to go out in the yard right this second. So let me just attach the first one. Leave a little bit of space between the seam and where I'm attaching so that it'll close. And there's the first one down. And let me go let the dogs out. And back. All right, I'm going to try and make sure I line everybody up all nice and neat. So hopefully this will work. And I'm doing the last ticket of each stack first. Now, before, and I wish I had, somehow they got out of whack lined up because I've got more space down here than up here. I would have scooted them, should have scooted them down a little bit more and my caps are so not even, but that's quite all right. Um, I'm pulling out another sheet of book paper and I am going to cut, I'm going to cut uh, strips of book page four and a half inches long by a half inch wide. And these are going to cover up the tearaway tabs on our ticket in our ticket booklet. And I'm going to layer a piece of the book page between each layer of tickets. So I'm going to glue down the first layer of tickets and then glue down a strip of book page. Then I will attach the next layer of tickets and glue down another strip of book page so that there's a strip of book page between each layer of tags in the booklet and I kept the tickets that had like the prills in it on the top row and I think for this last strip since you're going to see it I am going to use a little bit of ink to ink it up distressed ink tea dye I may pull out some of the washi tape. So I had to take out the original audio from this because I did not realize how clearly my dog's barking came across when I was recording until I went to edit this. And I had to pause the recording of this voiceover because they started losing their minds. And here I'm just adding a piece of washi sticker to the book page. Actually, <clears throat> now that I've done it, I think I want to add a little bit of the peacock feather along the edges. So there are all of our tickets attached in our little booklet, um, and you can flip through them. You can also tear out individual tickets and use them on other projects or as ephemera however you want to. And now that we've finished looking through them all, we're gonna do the inside cover. And I've got smaller makeup brushes that I'm gonna use to ink up the flowers because they're smaller and it's easier. Now, if you have too much of a dark ink color on your brush, you can just wipe it off on a paper towel or a paperless paper towel like I'm doing to clean off some of the ink before you switch colors. My leaf, I'm going to do the salvage patina and then edge it with a little brown to make it pop a little. So I'm just going to go ahead and shape the flowers like I did for the butterflies on the front uh, and just go in, give them a little bit of shape and then do the butterflies that are on the inside as well. And part of why I'm doing this voiceover is because my dogs were losing their ever-loving minds in the background while I was filming this, and so I knew I had to take the audio out, and this way I can also speed things up. And now I'm going to use some art glitter glue to attach the butterflies. I'm just gluing them in the center, and then I'll glue all of the flowers and the leaves down as well.
So our ticket booklet's all done. And it's got all of our little tearaway tickets in it. And I actually went ahead and made several more, including two Christmas ones. So flip through those real quick. And these are using the strips I showed earlier in the video. And then I used for these the die cuts again, stamped the backgrounds again, and uh, these are uh, from Laser Cut Ephemera Packs by 49 and Market. So I used those, and these are uh, clear ephemera pieces by 49 and Market. So I used a bunch of those on this one. And I was a little, ooh, so you gotta be very careful flipping. The tickets are definitely easily to tear away, since I just managed to tear those two out. So definitely be careful if you're flipping through your ticket booklet. And on this one, I actually, it had um, torn away beforehand, so I just used a little washi to reattach it. So yeah, you've gotta be careful if you use the perforating tool, it's really easy to tear away your tearaways. So just be gentle if you're flipping through. So those. And then I did two Christmas ones, so I used mislet pages, and they're a little on the thin side, so I'm not sure how well they're going to hold up. Um, but for this, I used a bunch of ephemera from Tim Holtz, and some Christmas stamps and dies to create the embellishments for the tickets. So there's our Christmassy ones, and I went with lumberjack plaid and... Uh, rustic Wilderness. Like, I know I know the word. So that's one Christmas one. This is another Christmas one. So again, just a bunch of Tim Holtz ephemera and die cuts and all sorts of goodies to make cute little tickets that will tear out of the booklet, as illustrated by my being a little too rough with the abandoned coral ones. Um, I love to see if I can reattach those with some washing. So there are all of our booklets with tearaway tickets. That's all for today. Please be sure to do all the things that lets YouTube know you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.